Roswell Flight Test Crew here in Hotlanta for Exponential 2021. And we're back with our good friend Phil Burks from First Ice. How you doing, Phil? I'm great, Patrick. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Now, we did a segment with you, and we were trying to remember two years ago, three years ago, but you had a little tiny model of a drone in a box. And over here, we've got a full-sized actual drone in a box. First, remind people what the project is generally. Sure, Patrick. The, the project is called First Eyes, and it's for first responders. We looked for a way that we could get information, situational awareness for our first responders. So before they get to a fire, an accident, or other disaster, they can actually see what's going on so they know how to respond. Two trucks, three trucks, one truck, northwest, southeast, all of that. So this gives that situational awareness. Yeah, now it was a great idea in theory, but last time we talked about it, your hardware wasn't there yet. Beyond visual line of sight, which this is obviously going to require, was like a pipe dream. Nobody was doing that, but there's been a, a lot has happened the last couple of years. Let's bring them up to speed. So certainly, let's talk about the hardware to start with. It was a, a dream. We had, as you said, we had a model on our table. We had a lot of traffic, a lot of interest said, yeah, if you can pull this off, but there was skepticism. There's always is, isn't there? But uh, we have, we are at what uh, the financial people call MVP, minimum viable product. We actually have four working MVPs. We have a port uh, that actually can house the drone that is uh, temperature controlled. It has a patented charging system that we have designed and put in there so the drone can charge itself when it lands and it's waiting for the next mission. We have a tower that uh, can house radar. It can handle uh, comms and a weather station all built into it. And, and I just in passing, I said radar and other things, but that's one of the ways that they're seeing that we're all seeing that BV loss is going to be conquered, is having a specialized level of radar that's going on that helps us know before we take off and go to an incident like a fire or a disaster, is the sky clear for us to fly? And if we can put that at our port, we know instantly that we can take off and we can take off in less than a minute. Wow. And as you say, this drone goes on station. Now, one thing that has changed is before you had sort of a VTOL fixed wing, but now in, in your life-size, full-size box here, you've got more of a conventional multi-rotor, large by modern standards, but still a conventional multi-rotor. What's the thinking there? So that we found out in, in the time that we, since we last talked, Patrick, that we we actually, there are different use cases that we have out there. There are use cases that are more hover-centric. There are more that are get there fast centric So the one that we have behind us here is our hybrid VTOL that has folding wings and we actually have uh, a working versions of that that when it lands the wings fold and fit inside the port we also have some situations where that might be a more campus security level where we need to go and hover we're not don't have to get there so fast but we need to hover and or fly very slow and so there was a need for two of those but Patrick as we've designed this we've also learned that we need to make our port a drone agnostic and we have. So if somebody here at the show comes up with a drone that they've created that uh, we want to put inside our box, we can do it. All we have to do is add three very simple things to their drone that in most of the US made drones as ours is, uh, are very simple to add in the components that then talk to our network that we have and away we go. Outstanding. Now, I think the most exciting thing you told me, other than seeing it full-sized, of course, was that you said that you're on the cusp of deploying a number of these all over the country in like a beta testing. What's going on there? So we are in the middle of a, a seed round of raise right now and uh, of money. And uh, when we uh, get that, which is very, very soon, we're going to build 20 of these, Patrick. And we're going to put them in hot, cold, wet, dry. We're going to put them at uh, places like New Air, places that are already involved in the drone IPP program so that we they can run them and test them and really knock the dust off of them. Um, and then simultaneously, we're going to begin the manufacturing process and that hopefully we just have minor changes as we go. But the software is done, the drone is done, the, the port is done, and now all we've got to do is get it out and really knock the dust off of it. So exciting. Well, Phil, keep me posted as you have as this goes forward because I'm really excited. I think this is going to save lives. It will. Save time, save lives, 
save money at the last. But those things, I don't know if you remember the factoid that we gave you, but the FCC came up with a, a study in 2016 that said if we can shave one minute off of every 911 response in America, it's equivalent to saving 10,000 lives. That's huge. And we are doing that every day. That's just fantastic. Well, Phil, thanks so much for the update. Absolutely. Thanks for coming by, Pat. Absolutely. And from Exponential 2021 in Hotlanta, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off. Thanks again. Thank you.